Welcome to the finish line with So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today I want to finish a quilt that I started last month and I want to do some very, very simple quilting. There's going to be no marking involved because we're going to use the seams that are right on the quilt. And we're going to be able to do this with a sit down machine or a home domestic machine. On the domestic machine, we could use a walking foot and on the sit down machine, we're going to be able to do with ruler work. With the ruler work, we will end up with a quarter inch seam. And that's because the foot is designed to give us that quarter inch seam. On a domestic machine, we can have that change to whatever we want. We can set that needle position so we can have a larger seam or a smaller seam. And what we're going to do is we're not going to stitch in the ditch, we're going to stitch beside the ditch. And by doing that, we never see those little times that we run in or out of the ditch. And it's a very easy technique to do with great results. So instead of stitching right here in the ditch, we're going to stitch on each side of the ditch. If we're using ruler work, we will put that ruler right along the seam. And when that foot runs along, it's going to have a quarter inch seam. If we're going to be using a walking foot, we're going to use the edge of the walking foot. And that edge is going to run right along that seam. So we can adjust that needle to be a quarter inch or it can be more. To quilt this, I'm going to start from the top, quilt all the way down. So I'm going to be repeating long, long rows. The thread I'm going to use today is from Habendosh. It's 100% cotton and the color is called cream. So this color is going to blend in more on the white and I'm going to see it a little bit on the other colors. So this will be in the top and in my bobbin. From the edge of the foot to where the needle is, I am looking at half an inch. Well, I want a little bit more, so I'm going to move it over as much as I can. And that now gives me that larger space that I'm looking for. I also will be setting up my machine so the stitches are not at 2.5. I do want the stitches a little bit larger, so I'm going to set them at a three. Because I've moved my needle over all the way, I'm going to have to keep that in mind when I am following these lines. If I'm going to run my foot along this edge, the needle is coming in more. So I won't be able to turn around and do that edge because I will have a smaller seam. So as I'm stitching, I am always going to stitch with this edge of the foot to the left hand side of the seam. So I'm going to do all of the rows on the left, turn the quilt, and then do all of the rows on the left. Either that or remember to move that needle over if you want the foot to go on the right. If I have an area where I do not have a seam that I can follow, I will be drawing the seam line, not the stitching line. And by drawing the seam lines, I'm going to be able to use them in any direction. So I'm sewing to the left. I'm going to start right off of this and stitch down. And even though I'm on a domestic machine, I still like to wear my gloves. It just helps me grip that fabric better. So before I start stitching, I do like to have an area set up. I do want to extend this table. So I have a table that I've been able to adjust. And that is going to give me more room for the quilt to sit on. So it's not going to hang down. The next thing will be extending the sewing machine table. Now we can't extend it right to us, but we can extend it with a pillow. So I have a nice soft pillow and I've put it right underneath this here acrylic insert and it comes right to me. So this is giving me a full work surface, the maximum that I can get. And that's going to allow the quilt not to hang down, but to float on top. So I'm starting off of the quilt. 
I'm going to follow the left hand side and I'm going to let the machine do all the work. I don't need to push or pull the fabric here. I'm going to guide it over here so I can lift this up and let the machine do all the work. When you get to a certain spot, pick it up and drive that underneath. So I'm not having to push here. I'm directing into this area. And we're going to be able to just keep taking this and let it go in all at the same motion. By us pushing and pulling, it's going to change the stitches. So we're going to have thick stitches or small stitches and we want them all to be the same. And you'll be surprised on how easy it is to guide from this angle, not here. And just keep letting the machine do all the work. The table here is going to support it. The pillow here is supporting it. And just keep stitching. So I'm going to do all of the lines going towards the left hand side. I'm starting from the center and going towards the right. So we have an equal space from the seam over on both sides of this sashing, which means it came into this center piece of four lines of stitching going in both directions. And you'll be able to see it better on the back. And there are our four lines of stitching. This is a very simple way of quilting, but it is still very beautiful. It showcases and frames those little squares. I did use a fusible batting to put this together, but just for extra security, I did put some pins right in the middle of those larger squares. I knew I wasn't going to quilt the centers, so I was able to leave them in until the quilting was all done. This particular quilt will need trimming and I do have lots of room to trim it. But before I decide where I'm going to trim it, I'm going to stitch right along this edge. Once that security stitch is done, all of the quilt has been quilted with that same stitch. So whatever the tension has been here, I now have that same tension along the edge. The next step that I like to do is draw my cutting line. I don't cut the cutting line first, I like to draw it. Now this particular pattern, I do have lots of space. I could trim to that quarter inch if I'd like, but I do want to go the most that I can. And I'm going to be able to give myself an inch and a half. I'm just going to draw that cutting line. So I know all of this is going to be cut off. Now that I have my cutting line established, I do want to secure all of these little threads so that they don't come unraveled. I know I will be stitching my binding on with a quarter inch seam, so I want to go a little bit less. And I also want to make my stitches a lot smaller. So my stitch length on my machine is going to be a two. And by stitching over top of these threads once and then stitching over them a second time when we put the binding on, it's just like when we're piecing, it will keep them from coming apart. So draw that line all the way around, stitch a scant quarter inch, and then you can trim that off. It's all trimmed, it's all quilted, and it's ready for the binding. Very easy stitching. We didn't have to worry about staying in the ditch. We just went on each side of the ditch and we went on each side of every ditch. It's all trimmed. We have that extra row of stitching to hold all of the threads down. It's quilted. The last thing will be the binding. So the straight line quilting is quick, 
it's easy, there's no marking the quilt, we just need to use the edge of a foot. Now it's good on our home domestic machines and it can be done on a sit down machine. And when it's all done, it really does have a sweet little old fashioned charm. I'll put a link in the description to the quilt and thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're working on next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.